On today's edition of Meditech, we discuss the latest space news including evidence of liquid water on Mars that may hint at the existence of an active core. Hubble repairs are discussed between NASA and SpaceX, and the DART mission smashes a satellite into an asteroid. This week has a lot to cover, so buckle on those seatbelts. Let's get started. This week, Mars has some major announcements to make. The Mars Global Surveyor satellite has recently completed an orbital investigation that provides the strongest evidence yet of liquid water and possibly even an active geothermal core on Mars. The satellite's topography mapping tools were utilized by an international team of researchers to feed data into a new computer model built to mimic ice movement on Mars with fascinating results. First, we need to go back to 2018, when the Mars Express orbiter discovered that the southern ice cap decreased and increased in height depending on the season. This shift was once attributed to the flow of liquid water, much like the ice caps on our planet. While many scientists remained skeptical, for there to be liquid water under such a thick layer of ice would require geothermal heat. Yet as far as anybody knew, Mars was just a solid frozen rock with no geothermal active regions. Scientists suggested that the movement may possibly be explained by some dry material moving around, such as sand or shale, in the absence of other information, and they left the subject alone until alternative techniques could be utilized. At this point, we go back to 2022. Greater sensitivity is provided by the equipment on the board of the Mars Global Surveyor Satellite, specifically a laser altimeter, which is more accurate than Mars Express radar at mapping the shape of the upper surface. The surveyor identified waves or undulations in the ice surface in addition to confirming the previously discovered movement. On Earth, we've now utilized a similar apparatus to track the movement of our own ice sheets in relation to the liquid water pathways that we know exist beneath them. Using the specific Martian circumstances and gravity, the researchers were able to create a computer-driven simulation model for Mars using this data to determine the precise motion of these ice caps. The model demonstrated that this movement could only result from subsurface liquid water motion. Here, the focus of the study shifts from water to maybe making a significant discovery of the planet's core. The model demonstrated that for this glacial movement to exist under Martian gravity and circumstances, liquid water is required. However, it also demonstrated that geothermal activity was necessary for liquid water to exist because the planet's temperatures were so low. Scientists have previously assumed that the planet's core was completely inactive. In any of our observations to date, no active volcanoes, geysers, or springs have been discovered. When Mars Express first observed the movement in 2018, there was a great deal of skepticism because of this. The researchers now suggest that we should be open to the idea that there may still be some movement occurring beneath the Martian crust in light of the new findings. The accuracy of the model in using the laser altimeter readings from the Mars Global Surveyor is good news for any group hoping to find water on another icy globe, but we will probably need to wait until a polar mission can drill deep enough to find water. As we become more adept in locating water, we'll become more adept at locating life, much like Enceladus or Titan. The Hubble telescope of NASA SpaceX is stepping up to give its assistance to a veteran piece of equipment that is 32 years old and desperately in need of an orbital rescue to keep afloat. NASA revealed last week that SpaceX would evaluate the Hubble telescope to determine whether the commercial rocket business would be able to provide maintenance, something not done in more than 12 years. Hubble was meant to be maintained and enhanced using the same space shells that launched it in 1990. However, the last servicing call to the telescope was in 2009, so obviously it hasn't been happening since the program was cancelled in 2011. Since that time, the telescope has been gradually losing altitude and eroding, but Hubble has been the workhorse of NASA's stellar observation programs for decades at this point. Even the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope has just highlighted the crucial role the Hubble still performs. Only because Hubble's wide field sensors served as targets for the James Webb's incredibly detailed photos. Otherwise, the Webb would take an eternity to locate the appropriate area to focus on. Possibly because of this heightened significance in the face of a Hubble that is progressively losing orbit, SpaceX contacted NASA a few months ago with a suggestion. They came up with the concept of conducting a study to determine whether a commercial crew might lift Hubble back up to its operational orbit and provide it with much-needed maintenance. Last Monday, NASA agreed and authorized the investigation under the Space Act. In fact, here is where the SpaceX Polaris team is coming in. 
The six-month research will concentrate on the technical side of the plant, specifically if a driving capsule could even be converted to accomplish the work. A variety of industrial, commercial operations make up the Polaris missions. A commercial crew will travel on the first Polaris Dawn voyage, scheduled to launch no later than March 2023, to the highest Earth orbit ever reached and perform a spacewalk. This is probably the main reason SpaceX is involving Polaris, because the Dragon capsule will need to undergo major renovations in order to service Hubble. Every shuttle has a cargo area and armature that was used to hold the telescope during usage. Up there, it resembles having a floating garage. Dragon is a crew capsule that functions similarly to the earlier Apollo capsules. Although for Polaris Dawn, it already needs major modifications to provide room for a spacewalk. The Polaris team would therefore be the most qualified to discuss how a Dragon could be tweaked while still functioning as intended. Additionally, if the second Polaris expedition is planned out at all, or even if it is, we haven't received much information about it. We are aware that the general purpose of Polaris missions is to advance technology, this is stated clearly on their website. A Hubble service mission, according to Polaris lead Jared Isaacman, would make sense as the program's second mission, but given all the necessary modifications, a study should come before this notion. According to NASA, this study will not be closed. If any other business or international organization feels that adding recommendations would be beneficial, they are welcome to do so. In concept to maintain older satellites, like Hubble with a robotic spacecraft, was already being developed by Northrop Grumman, a longtime NASA partner, and SpaceX says they are open to that notion as well. SpaceX manager Jessica Jensen said, There could be something that comes out of this analysis that says, well, it does not make sense to have a human mission going to do this, we want to help Hubble. Jensen was speaking to the press about the project. It's encouraging to see NASA engage in more collaborative work. Hubble has been a crucial instrument for the entire globe, and the shuttle repeatedly extended its operational lifetime. It's challenging to think of a subject that would better highlight collaboration between commercial and governmental entities, considering how crucial it is for future observation missions. As of Wednesday, September 26, which has just passed, NASA's $330 million DART mission came to an end when its satellite purposefully collided with an asteroid. Last November, the double asteroid redirect test was launched at the sizable asteroid Didymus. Although you could be excused for thinking this trip was a spectacular waste of $330 million, the success of the DART mission marks the first time humanity has demonstrated we can defend ourselves against impending asteroids. The plan was to orbit the rock and ram into Dimorphos. Several organizations on Earth together keep an eye on the skies for rocks that could endanger mankind. If anyone recalls what happened to the dinosaurs, we have already been struck, so while the likelihood of us being endangered by an asteroid that would end the world is unlikely, however, it is never zero. We will see one coming directly for us if we have enough time. What then do we do when that occurs? There are several ideas, like utilizing lasers to bomb it or using a gravity drag. The idea of a plucky crew of oil drillers seems promising, but none of those are as simple to test as simply pounding the rock with anything substantial. That straightforward strategy carried out sufficiently enough from Earth may easily deflect an approaching planet killer. DART was developed by NASA and its partners to demonstrate that all it might take is a straightforward kinetic hit. The satellite really consists of two vehicles, the primary DART kinetic impactor and a tiny cube satellite that separated from DART 15 days before impact and supplied additional telemetry, as well as observed the impact. DART was outfitted with a potent Draco camera to acquire a fix on its target due to the complexity of the maneuvers required. However, it also has a smart nav, an advanced navigation system often used to guide missiles. Draco and smart were able to maneuver the craft to within 17 meters of the desired target by working cooperatively. All that remains is to wait to see how much movement the DART impact pauses as Didymus and Dimorphos orbit one another in a way that makes it reasonably simple for NASA to measure the outcomes of this test. Let's spend a moment to appreciate what NASA has accomplished. It all happened at such high speeds that if DART hadn't been guided by the SmartNav system, there wouldn't have been time for anyone on the ground to intervene. They found an asteroid that was close enough to Earth and in an orbit that was stable enough for us to test on. They then fired a satellite at this rock that we had never surveyed and actually hit it. This has mind-bending math behind it. DART is remarkable for more reasons than simply the technological ones, 
as this is the first time we've ever tested a planetary defense system. Our previous response to the hypothetical asteroid was only a theory. Although NASA claims to not have found any potentially dangerous asteroids threatening us, it is only a matter of time before we do. Some of us will be able to sleep more easily thanks to DART's success. And that pretty much concludes today's episode. Don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts. We'd love to hear your input on this matter and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now, till the next video drop, you all take care.